Hey everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how I've made this, well I was going to call it a trifold card, but a double trifold. I might still call it that. Basically it ended up changing slightly during the Facebook Live, which is where I made this one, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So you can see all these panels, you can see the side there, and then you've got the wonderful piano either end, and then you've got that really nice kind of cluster of detail in the centre there and then the whole thing folds flat and it will fit into a six by six I'd recommend a box envelope if you're going to add lots of dimension because there is a little bit of bulk but I'll link my box envelopes up here and at the end of the video as well but it opens up and it stands like so you've got all the room on the back I just need to add some mats and layers on there which I'll do once I've done the tutorial but it's really straightforward to make so let me show you how Okay, so I've done a template. This is for one side and this is what you will end up doing. So we're going to have two of these. Now I have done something similar. It looks similar when it's all together, but that's actually using one whole piece of cardstock. And I called it a triple pop-out card or something like that. And I'll link that up here as well. Because if you like the overall finished kind of shape of this, that's in a five by seven. So you might like that one if you like that size. Also, it's a great card on its own. So that is a really nice card blank, just like so, and you can decorate it. But if you want to do the double, like I can do, and then you'll need two. So these are six by eight. Okay, so I cut two pieces to six by eight. Um, I'll pop a picture of this on my blog as well, because I know lots of people like to save them. Basically, along the eight inch side, you're going to score it two and four. Four inches, going to score all the way down. But the two, you just want to score down to two inches. Then miss the middle two inches, and then start scoring again. And the easiest way to do that is with this kind of ruler here. Now I like the T-square one because I can sit it along the top of my scoreboard. But if you line it up at the two inches, okay, I can see two inches here on my ruler. So I can just score at two, down to two, then miss all of this. You might have to come down just a little bit because obviously the ruler's coming up slightly higher. Okay, so I'd follow your, your two on your scoreboard, not your ruler, because you can see my two slightly higher, that's because it's higher here. But just to give you an idea of what you want to do, you want to score at two, down to two, miss the middle, and then start scoring again at four inches until you get to the bottom. At four, you're just scoring all the way through, and then you want to score at six, but you're not going to score here and you're not going to score there, you're just going to score there. Now the easiest way to do that is to, I think, maybe is to do it last. So just do the two and the four, just how I've showed you. Then rotate it. Then you're now going to score at two and four, but you're not going to start scoring until two inches. So again, with your ruler, the ruler's really good because it keeps you in line with the track more than anything, but now you want to hover your stylus over the two inches and then start scoring at the two down to six okay so just score down to six and then come along to the four inches miss the first two inches then start scoring at two inches again down to six so we've just created these two score lines then rotate it back and just join up the ends of those two score lines which will give you that six inch one okay so I'm just going to hold that up here and I'll just talk you through one more time so you're going to score down to two miss the middle start again at four and finish scoring so then score at four all the way down and then you're just scoring there at six inches but you're starting at the two down to the four and then rotate it this way and you're just joining them up now I've also put red Pen, uh, pen mark there because that's where you're also going to cut. So it's a score line but it's also a cut line. And you can see if I lie this one down, you can see now where we've cut those two. Okay, so do that twice if you want to have two of them. Now I'm just going to bring in my mat and now I'm going to cut down these two here. So I've just got my metal ruler, cutting knife. If you've got a trimmer and you'd rather do it in your trimmer than you can, I'm just going to pop my ruler down there. Okay, so now you can see my two cut lines. Then, first score lines you've done here, they're going to become mountain folds. This middle bit will also become a mountain, and these will naturally go into a valley fold along with that last one. Okay, so mountain, 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 valley, valley, valley. Three mountains, three valleys. And as you bring it over, it will come into your card shape and just burnish. 
now we have these two. Now you can do two different styles with this card. So if you just now flip this around, you can stick this one or stick that one over the top, whatever you prefer, and you can have that card shape. Okay, and then you would fold it flat by folding one over the other, and then you would have your thought that would be bigger but it's not no six by six card shape so it still gives you the same for some reason I thought it would be bigger but that's that way but um, I'm going to do the same as this one so with that one you just flip them both this way and stick one over the top and then you can see there how it gives you that shape so you either have it that way or that way both look really good I'm going to stick the left over the right and I'm going to grab my glue here. And I'm just going to give that a few minutes just to grab. Okay, so that is now secure. And you can see when you fold one under the other, it doesn't matter which side, but that will fold down to that six by six shape. So now I want to do my mats in there. So I've got three pieces here, which are one and three quarters by five and three quarters. And they are going to go here, here, and here. I've then cut 12, which are one and three quarters squared of these squares to cover all of the squares, the sides and everything. So all of this, all the mats and layers are from the papers I'm using, sorry, from the Daisy May Kit 12. Um, I'll show you the rest of this when I do the stamping. It's, yeah, it's lovely. This one is still available. The one that I used for that card there, which is that music theme, this one unfortunately is now sold out, but it was the box nine. So if any of you have got it by the paper crafts, uh, paper discovery. So all of these are using the paper craft society kits, which are done by different designers. So I'm going to go and get all of this stuck down first of all. Okay, so I was playing around because I wanted to get the red mats down before I decided on my pattern one. So I've already stuck them down, but you basically, depending on you know how many you want to cover, I'm not going to cover the sides. I'm going to leave those with the plain red and just have the pattern. But if you want to mat these ones, then you'll want three pieces that are one and a half by five and a half. And then all of these patterned ones on the squares are one and a half squared. So depending on how many you want, that's the size that you'll need. So now that's all ready for me to start doing my decoration. So I'd already gone ahead and stamped and coloured all of these lovely images. Now these stamps are all done by Claire Rowland, who is the, the designer, the illustrator behind Daisy May. And um, I've always loved her, her style. It's just very, very cute. So I've got a spare one there. But you can see all of the stamps there. I'll just pop them behind this piece just so you can see them a bit better there. So you can see the letterbox, you've also got the bird bath, you've got the lantern, you've got other bits and pieces but I've just done quite a few of the tree kind of branches, the poinsettia, obviously the, the letterbox there and a couple of the robins. There's the lantern, there's also these little ones of the holly on their own because they're quite nice to decorate. So I've got all that ready, I've coloured them all using my Arteza coloured pencils and then I've die cut them using the corresponding dies, which you get there as well. So you can see all of those. Now you also get the artificial snow, which is brilliant. So I'm probably going to add that. If not, I might use some white Nuvo drops as well. There is the burlap ribbon. And I do want to use the buttons, which are here. They're little red buttons. I forgot to put them in the last project i done. And then the sentiments. I love that we have these here. So I'm going to pull one of them out. You see those two that I've already used because I used this when I made the side flap card and I'd done the letterbox as the little flap on the side of the card and it looked really cute. So I'll link that one up here in case you've missed it and um, it just gives you a little bit more inspiration. So what I want to do now is just start building up a scene in the middle here. Okay, I actually don't think I'm going to use this. <laughs> I think I'm just going to keep it with the flowers and all the branches and the poinsettia. So I might just maybe have, I'm going to trim these, but I quite like that and I'm going to pop it on foam. Maybe that one there. You kind of need 
an odd number so maybe we can have two there so maybe something like that and then let's take the happy Christmas because I like that one there so then I can have my happy Christmas in the middle there and then so I've got the lantern there as well so I could actually maybe I could have the lantern hanging from this side because that looks quite nice I like that I'm arrangement and then maybe I don't have the poncettio and I just have some more just have the three poncettias in the middle there so I can keep them for another project and I could have a little holly on the flower there and on the sentiment sorry along with another one there because I'm going to add shape to it all build it up make sure it's nice and kind of lifted and then I could put a little bit of ribbon Maybe I won't use the burlap, I think that might be a bit too much, but I think I might use one of the little heart buttons here with a little bit of twine going through. Maybe actually I could have that there instead. So I really like that. I'm going to use Nouveau Drops on all, the, of, on all of the berries. I'm going to use some of my glossy accents on all of these bits and pieces here, but I really like that layout. So that's what I'm going to now do. I'm going to get that all stuck down and then I'll come back at the end to do all the little details. Okay, so I've stuck all that down, so I really like it. So I'll just bring it up a bit closer there. So now I'm just going to add further detail. So I added the little wooden heart with the twine. This twine also comes in the kit along with the burlap and the snow. You do get quite a bit, a few bits. Um, I couldn't thread it through, so I've just done the bow separate and then just stuck it on top. Put my sentiment there, and then yeah, I'm going to add my nouveau drops and glossy accents. I'm not going to, well, yeah, I don't think I'm going to add the snow. I'm going to leave it for now. I might decide later on. To add it in but this here is the vintage drops by Nouveau and it is the post box red so it seems an appropriate color and I, do, I think it's the one I used last time for the berries but just make sure you get your air out first because you'll get little pockets of it otherwise so this needs to be the last thing you do because it needs time to dry so I'm just very carefully adding a few berries just where they kind of are already in the images anyway so it's easy to see keeping them a little bit apart because if they join they become one big blob <laughs> so I'm just spacing them apart a little bit okay and then I'm going to finish it with the glossy accents and I'm going to cover the center of the flowers and also do the birds eyes so I just think it's nice to have a little bit of shine so this here you just do just a blob in the middle it will dry completely clear you'll see all that much closer um, in more detail and stuff when I take the photos of it okay so I'm just bringing it up really close there so you can see the effect that gives you so see that blob in the center of the poncettias that will dry clear and then you'll see all the yellow detail but you can see, you should see just the little blobs on the robin's eyes, but again, that will go clear. And then again, just down here. I, should, I probably might add some glossy accents to the lamp as well, because the outside, it's all going to kind of be glass. I might cover a lot of that with them. So yeah, there it is. I don't want to fold it in, because I want that to just stay like that. Now I'm going to leave it there until that dries. And I'll just bring that one back in again, just to give you an idea of another way to decorate it. I just love them such a great shape and I like that it folds down into that six by six size and will fit into your box envelope so yeah if you do want to do more of a five by seven size I will link the one that's similar like I said up here I probably would have linked it earlier as well so but there you have it so thank you for watching I will link uh, this one below because as I'm making this video this kit is still available but like I said unfortunately this one has gone and um, yeah I'll be back again very soon with another video thanks for watching bye